What is going on guys, today I'm going to show you how to vertex paint a sort of puddle on a concrete material. So you can use any material for this, I'm going to show it on concrete, but you can follow the same steps as long as you have your textures of like maybe grass site for your actual material. So if we look at what i got here, I have a concrete material with what looks like a puddle. So it's not the most detailed puddle, but it's essentially I have a puddle on my material. Now I come into here and I start painting around. You can see I, I can take that puddle away. If I type the strength and swap that over, I can really paint the puddle back in. And even if I wanted to, I could paint the whole thing. Strength higher, weight is higher. And I could always just have it so all of it's pretty much puddle, and then in between, I could have a pathway. So I can do pretty much what I want with that. And it allows me to paint how I want my puddles to look. So, let's go back over. So, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So, first, we'll need to create material for our plane here. And we need to make sure we have a plane that is. Um, that has a lot of vertices on it. So I explained in the previous video when showing you how to vertex paint in the first place that you, if you have a plane that has few vertices, it's going to look very blocky. But if you have one that has more, you're going to be able to paint more detail onto it. And if I show you here with fewer vertices, you can't. And if you don't quite understand what that means, I'll quickly show you the mesh. Oops. If we look at the mesh, it just looks like a four-sided shape. If we go to the wireframe, we can see this has quite a few polys. So just do this, you can just like, um, whatever you're exploring it from, Blender, 3ds Max, or May, you could just like subdivide it and then bring it in. So, let's start a new one. So this again, does have a lot of vertices. So, right click and we'll create material. And we're going to call it Puddle. That, that's fine. Try that onto there. Come into here. And we'll minimize it, just so we can grab these three, so our concrete, our concrete normals, and our concrete roughness. So, first off, my concrete is oh, it's quite quite bright. So you can even change that in here by changing the brightness and everything in here. Oh, that went really slow. Or I could change it actually in the material, which I'm going to do. So if we come into here, I'm going to very, oh, that's the wrong one. There you go. I'm going to quickly change this. So I'm going to put a subtract. Oh. So you don't need these stages if your texture was perfect when you brought it in. But I want to change mine a little bit just because I don't like how bright it is. So we're going to put a subtract of not 2, we're going to put 1. I'm going to put an overlay. I'm going, oh, I'm going to hold one and left click to put a constant in and just have a slight gray constant. And that's pretty much what I want it to look like. So we went from sort of that material to just a bit darker, as you can see. And that's what I want for that. So we're going to move these in our little areas. So we've got our albedo, our roughness area, and our normals. And we're not going to connect them up quite yet because we obviously want to connect them so you can paint water on them. So to do this, you'll need to come up here, write in vertex, and get a vertex color. And this will allow us to paint um, red value, blue, uh, green value, blue value, and our alphas, our like, alpha value. So if I actually come into here and I go back onto our concrete puddle, we can see, if we come into this section, we can see that I have alpha selected. So whichever one you connect in is whatever you're going to have to click to actually apply it. I use alpha whenever I'm using just two values because... I just prefer using alpha. You can use red, green, blue, it doesn't matter. If you're using multiple values, then it will start to matter. But if you're just using, like I am, either water or concrete, you could you just need to use one. So let's go back into the material I'm making. So let's bring that back up. So we're gonna have to create a lerp. So what a lerp allows us to do is go between two different values. So our first value will be our concrete. So now let's set up, and we're going to want to connect us up the alpha to that. Now we need to make our water material. So you can actually you could get a water material or water texture online and connect this in, or you can just create one because water is quite it's just quite a see-through material anyway. So 
I'm just going to hold one left click, or actually I'm going to hold three and left click, so we can actually add some colour, so we get three constant. Give it slightly blue tinted, and it's going to be very white. Maybe like, maybe that. Um, then we're going to create another lerp. So this lerp, so what we're going to do here, we're basically going to combine this texture, as you can see here, because I'm previewing it. We're going to combine our concrete with the water. So when I connect this up, oops, when I connect this up, you into here. If I don't add it to alpha yet, we'll have a perfectly 50 50 share. So if I zoom in, you can just see the concrete texture. What we're going to want to do is if I hold one left click and add that to alpha, and I put that to 0 0.05. So what that'll be doing is it'll be putting a very sort of faint water um, texture over the whole thing, or whatever you have for your water over the sort of whole concrete. Then we're going to want to connect this to there. So what that basically does is there's a watery concrete here. Then there's an unwatered concrete here. And then you get the lerp here that allows you to paint the alphas. Or sort of using the alpha values in your vertex um, painting, you can paint whether it's a concrete with water in it or as a concrete without water. And we connect that up and we have our albedo done. So if you select uh, your whole albedo, press C, you can very simply just call it albedo. So that way it's nice and neat. Now we're going to do our roughness, which is probably the most important part of the actual um, the actual water, because water is very reflective, but concrete is not. And as you can see, there's sort of quite a bit of reflection on the concrete at the moment. So if we, I'm going to hold, press O and left click, and I'm going to invert my concrete, because this is very dark, so it's going to make it very shiny. So I'm going to want to invert it so it's a very sort of white texture with a few details. That's what I want. So you might not need to do that. You might have a perfect roughness for yours. I'm just altering mine because I need to. So now I'm going to add another lerp. And this lerp is going to sort of tell us whether, again, it's going to be the concrete or it's going to be the concrete water. So add the alpha here. And water is obviously very reflective, so we're going to want a very low value. So I want to left click again to get one constant. So we're going to keep it. So you could keep it at zero, but I actually prefer keeping it at minus one. I don't know why this in engine just gives it a nicer effect. You should usually go between zero and one, but minus one gives it, to me anyway, a bit of a nicer effect. Again, you could change this as much as you want. You might not prefer this, so you could change it to zero, whatever you want. So connect this to roughness, and that is the roughness already done. It's not much actually to add. So as you can see, all we can sort of preview right now is what it would look like if there was water on it. So that's why it's so shiny. So for this, you're going to want to pretty much ignore your preview most of the time. Now we just need to do our normals. And the way I set this up was I just connected that to there, put the alpha in there. And again, to get a lerp, L will left click, put that to normals. And that's all I did. That's all I did to get my uh, water. And it looks really weird on the material, but that's fine. It gives it a nice effect in the engine. And if we just select them, see roughness. I apologize if you can hear me typing, but it's not much I can do. I don't have like a floating microphone. So yep, we just call that what we want. And that should be pretty much done. So if we click apply, come into the engine. This will already actually have some paint, I believe. Yep. So now we have our puddle. So if you haven't touched it at all yet, you'll probably have these three values selected. So when you start paying, nothing's going to happen. So you're going to want to select alpha. Rub this all out, because you, well, I'm rubbing it out because you guys won't have it shown. So yours will probably look like that. So now you want to make sure the white value is at the top and it will allow you to paint on your puddle. And you can go further into this. You can, um, so if I make this like really weak, you can like, oh, and so it takes away. You can make it really faint in some areas. And, do what you want and you can go about making this look like like oil if you just make it thicker because if we come into here if we just turn that up it will make it look thicker um it, we could change the roughness of it if we want because some things that might be on this concrete might not be as reflective as water um but to do all of this you can right click it and convert to parameter and make a material instance as i've shown in another video so thank you very much for watching that's how you sort of do a basic puddle text uh, puddle material on some of your materials again thank you very much for watching i hope this helps people if you want to leave a suggestion in the comments of what um, you want to know in the engine i mainly know material based things but i 
do I have looked into foliage and stuff like that. So leave a suggestion, I'll see what I could do, and bye bye.